We're starting here. They should be coming in. <clears throat> Varatnagar and Nepal should be coming in on the link. So this is the site of the incision skin flap, and this is the cranitomy site. Because there is a this is a Temporal cryotomy. So temporal cryotomy either done with a linear incision, incision, linear skin flap incision. So this is also called the Drex approach. And the cryotomy is done only in the focus in the temporal region. So it's the base is up to the zygoma. That's and this is the. Uh, Incision for the question mark incision for the temporal side zone, and this is the cran joint for the temporal region. Uh, and this is the terminal cran tummy. so it's also called the frontal temporal cran tummy. So the terminal is a this is the area which it is called the terion, where there is a junction of the four bones. That's the frontal, and the parietal, and temporal, and the this is the sphenoid bone. That means so this is the point where the terion. So the benefit of this approach is that we can approach the anterior and the superior part and the middle cranial fossa. And other cranitomy is the frontotemporal or better zygomatic. So in this, uh, the part of the frontal bone and the part of the temporal and the zygomatic arc along with the orbital rim is taken out as a one piece. 
So this is done when there's a lesion in the suprastellar region or in the endocrine fossa where there's a need a much, it a, gives a much more uh, easy access. And other is a question mark flap. So most of the time question mark flaps is done in the trauma cases. So especially subdural hematoma, acute subdural or the patient who presented with a multiple contusion or patient with a uh, diffuse cerebral swelling. So this is the, this gives a cryotomy uh, from the, exposing the whole of the hemisphere of the one side. So this is the trauma flap or question mark flap. So at least uh, a 15 centimeter length from the frontal to the occipital is a uh, calculate so that we can remove the bone flap. So this is the cryotomy. So, so this is after the cryotomy. And other kind of flap is a horse tube skin flap. So the base of the also, skin flap is towards the down where the, we have to maintain the vascular artery uh, at the, from the superficial temporal artery and the occipital post, posterior auricular artery. And other type of flap is a mitral flap. So this is the flap where we usually use for the lesion in the occipital region where we can make an incision in the midline and the other limb of the incision will be in the other side. And other type of cryotomy is a retromastoid, sub cryotomy. So this is a common approach for the vestibular schwannoma or the, or the lesion in the, or the lesion in the CP angle area. And other is the sub cryotomy. So lesion presenting in the posterior fossa, then we have to go for a sub cryotomy. So usually the exposure is from uh, by mastoids and uh, above to the transverse sinus region. And below, sometimes we have to take the foramen magnum rim for the complete decompression. Thank you, Dr. Pramod. Yeah. Thank you so much. We now have Dr. Mahendra Singh from India. Dr. Mahendra Singh uh, has a special interest in illustrations on neurosurgery, so this will be an interesting talk. Please uh, uh, give a big hand for him. He will be teaching us about creativity and neurosurgery and how can we use uh, illustrations to increase our knowledge about neurosurgery. Good evening. Thank you very much for Dr. Particularly Dr. Ipe that he gave me enough respect to call for this kind of topic. Am I audible? Hello. Because it's a topic which uh, normally people people do not appreciate, and even if they appreciate, they do not take pains or they do not stop and think at how the surgery can be better in, in the sense of art, or if they're writing papers, they're still thinking of, let's finish the job. So, because I come from one of the busiest institutes of India, this behavior I have seen very closely. And uh, in that sense, a lot of doctors who just want to, they are submerged into work, 
And art is something where you need to stop, you need to appreciate, even whatever you are doing, enjoy your own surgery and think how it can be created as an art form. The second question is why we need it. This topic is more for the Indian subcontinent than anybody else. Because we are the ones who are right now just doing the job without creating beautiful embellishments. Sorry. Hello. 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 Shall I continue? Yeah, so it's more of an introspection for neurosurgeons of Indian subcontinent, particularly if these concepts, they get into the, the minds of medical students, it will be very important. Because I was, a, I was first a painter, and I just kept painting throughout my childhood, and I never wanted to be a doctor. And then I was forced to go into medical. And not exactly forced, but uh, when I realized it, I realized that I, there's nothing else because I've taken biology and I have to go into this. Those were not the era of uh, internet and we did not know what our varied fields for us. And so I went there, but then I was always struggling in the sense that you know there was something, creative processes going inside me, but then how to apply that. And then many times there are other problems also like this is a painting which I made when I was eight years old. This is my first painting, which is still, we have it. So, so my parents realized that, oh, my, my child is a good painter. So it was like just every summer vacations, you would go and learn paintings. But after that, you have to study. So, so being a painter was never an option. Are we having the sound? We're not getting the sound for this. The sound is not coming. Okay, how many people know this guy? Okay. Frederick Chopin. I didn't know him till my son went to the piano. And we always fight whether it's Chopin or Chopin. But they say he's Chopin. He is one of the, the most illustrious pianist in the history of piano. Although the piano is created in Italy, but this guy comes from Poland. And, and uh, when, when we were, you know, me and my son were fighting, the Indian music versus Western music. And he was saying, Baba, if you think that, you know, this guy died in 1849 at the tender age of 39. But, and, and if, you can, uh, if you can think that the gramophone was invented in 1877. So even when the music could not be recorded, these people have created a music which has passed on centuries. If you can understand the importance, even today, there are people who want to be, they feel proud if they are presenting the, the music of Chopin. Another one is this, this art was stolen by, by uh, during Second World War by Hitler. He wanted to create a great, greatest museum on earth in Austria. And this is one of the most significant art for Christianity and for the Western world. The idea was if he can make the Europeans culturally blind, the next generations to come would not know what was their culture. Right? This is against altarpiece. This is right now in uh, Belgium. Most beautiful thing to know is these artworks are commissioned. When you go to the western part of the world and you go into the churches and you go to the museums, you would find that a lot of, lot of artwork was commissioned. One of the best uh, representation of uh, human civilization, if you want to see, that, that at least I believe, if we have to see only one building in this world, one must go to St. Peter's Basilica. This is such a fine work of art created by Michelangelo and by Bernini that this, this is considered as the, the best part or remnant of Renaissance 
and Christian, Christendom. This is the modern picture. There are 1,75,000 masterpieces inside, which cost billions. I mean, there's no cost to it. And if you go and try to understand this art, you will take years for that. And I met my guide. There is a specific exam in Vatican for historians. And even professors of history fail in this exam. So in order to become a guide in Vatican City, you have to be a really good historian. And again, the beautiful thing is all of this was commissioned. Another example for art creation is these are, anybody can say, what is this? This is a particular rock pattern. This is basalt rock. These are the basalt columns, very famously found in Iceland. In Reykjavik, then when they wanted to make a church, they made, they followed the same pattern. So this is a very famous church over there. The question is, why do they do it? I mean, they can make a straightforward building. They can just do it, but why waste so much of fun? Why, why create an idea? Why do so much of pain when they could just do it with a simple structure? So the concept of mortality and legacy. You know, mortality is everybody will die. But the thing is, we do not realize till it's very late. Even in our lives, we do not think of mortality. And once we start thinking, we start thinking of legacy. So very early in your life, you should, we should know we are mortal. Whatever we are creating, is it a legacy or is it just a work? Is it, is it just a job? So if we can see mortality, we want a continuance. And if we want a continuance, there are two ways. One is procreation, the other one is legacy. Art is a fast track to legacy. If anybody follows Robin Sharma, he is one of the most leading uh, motivation speakers. He very frequently says this. Legacy creation. Problem is medicine is just a technical advancement and art makes everything tasteful. So why not introduce art more and more into science? And th there is a time coming where now, since we are so many on planet, we need to intermix and we need to have more holistic way of looking at science. We cannot now segregate different branches. This is the costliest sold in recent time, in 2017. Anybody knows this art? The name is Salvatore Mundi. Salvatore Mundi means the savior of the world. This art was created by Leonardo da Vinci. And it, the, the hand gesture shows that baptism is done. And uh, on the left side is a crystal, which is a uh, glass crystal. During Renaissance period, this crystal was representing the planet Earth. That was the understanding at that time. This is sold at $400 million. That means 2,850 Indian crore Indian rupees. So my question is, we do best of the craniotomies, we do best of the anastomosis. And this art, this is just a very small painting. And this, why it becomes so valuable when people even can't understand it. And with particularly this painting, this was a doubt, this is real. Despite that doubt, this painting was sold so costly. So what I want to say is art creates. It creates new realms in science as well. So we had people like Da Vinci, who was an inventor, architect, sci architect, scientist, anatomist, astronomer, botanist, and cartographer. Nowadays, we do not want these kind of people. We want to specialize in everything. And there were people like Paul Ulrich, who would be working uh, world-class research in botany as well as zoology. And there were people who were, you know, they were showing their excellence in various fields. In modern times, I think of Michael L. J. Apuzo. He was a first deep sea diver, then he was a Navy SEAL, then he was a national athlete, and then he became a neurosurgeon after all of these. And today even, his, uh, his designation is Professor Emeritus for Neurological Surgery, Radiation Oncology, Biology, and Physics. Now, who thinks of that in, in uh, Indian subcontinent? You don't. You want to segregate. So in Renaissance, these people are called as polymaths. In India, they are called mixed wedge. And the, the most common thing they say is, come karle. Rest of all, you don't need to do. Again, I want to show you this painting. This is a beautiful painting. This shows, this is made by Bernini. And this is a school of Athens during the Renaissance period. It represents the Renaissance culture. 
if you can see, it won't be very difficult to find out a very open space. And a lot of artists with different abilities. Somebody is writing, somebody is doing something else. In the center, you would find there is a senior guy and then there is another guy. So maybe it's a fellowship kind of thing going on. A very senior person passing on his knowledge to the, other, uh, the next generation. And they are almost on the same ground. And there is a huge open space. Everybody can appreciate that. And there is daylight. Right? And the most beautiful thing that I like is this sky. Sky is, you know, it creates a connection with infinity. That's what I think. This is my, my understanding for this painting. And I connected with Dr. Ayub Cherian's Operation Theatre, where he has got landscapes inside. It, there is a very specific feeling when you do this. Lifelong, I had been thinking about an operation theater in which I would a glass dome and I can see outside world and perform surgery here. So I am making a connection from my surgery to infinity. And that vision is totally different from just doing a surgery. In normal uh, setups, we are creating operation theaters deep down in the building. We are just getting closed into a very, very tight structure, mentally as well as physically. So then it comes to me, art and science, the balancing act. What I can do is mostly I go and I join multiple workshops all across the world. And at the same time, uh, first of all, I choose beautiful places where I can travel as well or I can learn something culturally. And then I, I try to make my photography and other things. So all these photographs are going to show you are the, the other side of my scientific travels. And I'll tell you how it has changed me in my practice. So I had gone to Switzerland to learn spine. And I was in Luzern. And I see this man. He is playing with very young people. There is something called a ball game. We have got a pool game. We have got a very different pool game. This pool game is different. It is derived from French people. You throw a metallic ball. So I was talking to them. And they were playing with me. And then and I wanted to show this man's stance for light and the sky and everything the, the texture overall texture of the picture shows the aging process of this man but at the same time he has been clicked in a very specific position there was a girl she was very fond of reading novels and very quickly i realized that it seems like she and book is one right and and it seems like she's coming out of her own book so i took this picture in salzburg this is another guy who was playing that ball game. He's showing me the ball. And this guy was a senior most architect of Luzern. And he was going. He's alone in life. And I started talking to him. And I said, I want to photograph you. He said, why? I said, you are beautiful. He said, beautiful is not the word. I said, but I find you beautiful. So he started. He's telling me the story. What are the structures that he has created on the skyline? And uh, when I was taking the picture, you can see his hand and the telescope. They are parallel, and it shows some kind of vision of him towards the sky. This is my daughter at home. This is again, I joined first as a faculty in Dehradun Forest Research Institute. I found uh, two very senior photographers. I make friends with them. They were the guys who were winning all photography uh, competitions the last 10 years. They said, we give you a challenge. If you can give me an angle of this building, because we are shooting this building for 10 years. Just a single shot, if you can give us, which we have not shot, we will give you a party. And the moment I was entering, I took this picture. And when I showed them, they just ran back, because they had never taken this kind of picture. Again, the random architectural pictures in Belgium. This is in Hague. This is, uh, I was to eat in, in Italy. So I met my uh, medical illustration teacher in Genoa. This is Genoa. If you, if you, you can appreciate this bridge. This is recently fallen. This is one of the very adverse event happened recently in Italy. This is Positano. And this is Braga while attending the course on brain dissection. And again, Positano. So I had applied for the travel scholarship of Grenoble, France, and I wanted to go to deep brain stimulation. And uh, I was in Hong Kong. I came across 
this giant advertisement of Samsung. And I could see this, there is a lavender field. And uh, I thought that there's a lavender field probably in uh, some villages of France. So I studied a lot and 15 days we talked to a lot of local people in France because I wanted to be there after I finished that. And then finally I got this picture. So I actually stayed in this lavender field in a private house and I felt blissful. Bliss because I was, I had, I had learned something new in deep brain stimulation and then I come here, an entire village filled of the scent of lavender and I'm there. This picture was taken in Bangkok and then in September issue, this is on the cover page of World Neurosurgery. So when you are, you, you are into two fields, each field inspire each other. When I, since I'm constantly seeing brain, I am habitual of having patterns. And when patterns are there, they inspire you to take pictures. This picture was published in Spine Journal in 2014. And this is an endoscopic picture on the left side of a hematoma, ICH. And if you can see, there's a macro photograph of a flower and it looks like a stamen. Now the thing is, in 100 years back, there's a school called as Art as Applied to Medicine, Johns Hopkins Institute, USA. So 110 years back, they actually thought of a school where they can, they can make artists who can apply their art into medicine. The problem is there is still a gap. There are, there are artists and then there are scientists. And still, there is a difficulty in understanding. But in India or any country around, we do not have it. And that's what I want to inspire medical students and maybe the, the people who own institutes that we should have it. I had a discussion with Neman's people that I want to start something like this in Ames, but then nobody has got funds or nobody has even got the idea of creating this. So these kind of pictures are always my dream, creating the illustrations. They're coming on the front page. Uh, recently, two of my professors, they have come out with this tenet of uh, craniosynostosis. The entire book is written with, without any illustration. And they were asking me to make illustrations. I said, make me at least a co-author. They refused. So, and because it was a long time, it is a big time investment. So the idea they choose to play short. No, they, they underplay themselves. That's the, that's the problem. And people are doing wonderful surgeries, but documentation makes it more beautiful. Like this one, this is the, the, another story. This is an illustration by Peter Roth, who is in Switzerland. Now he's 75 years old. He joined uh, Yasar Gil as just a technician. He was a technician with a very nice painting in his hands. Yasar Gil knew that he, this guy can paint so he gave him an entire wing of medical illustrations. And if anybody has got the 10 volumes of micro neurosurgery, you know how beautifully the illustrations have been created. It's one of the most beautiful medical scriptures that we have. Because this kind of cerebellar folia connection, I have never seen. Now, how creativity applies to neurosurgery? This is a picture that I have taken during selective dorsal rhizotomy. I, was, I just cut the dura and this uh, arachnoid popped out just like a pearl. I stopped and I brought the endoscope in. It took about 10 minutes more. My wife is neuroanesthesiologist. She was shouting on me, why you are delaying? I said, this is such a beautiful sight. I can't waste it. It needs documentation. It needs a memory. So I took 10, 15 minutes. That endoscope came and then we shot this picture. This is published in World Neurosurgery. But then it also improves your documentation. Since endoscope was there, I was able to create, photograph these stages of selective dorsal rhizotomy, how to separate the dorsal and ventral nerves. And because then we had to educate people who do not understand neurosurgery at that level. These are the physiotherapists in India who treat the uh, spasticity. So we could create that. But because we stayed, we stopped, and we appreciated the beauty, it happened. And sometimes you just enjoy, if you, if you, if you have that attitude to enjoy, this is a tumor at CP angle. It was going till medulla. But if you can see the beautiful arterial pattern that you see on the left side of the dural wall, there's something so beautiful that you get connected to the overall integrity of the scene and you don't want to disturb it much. So as Dr. Ipe had said that if you go into brain, brain should not know you went inside. Only it will happen if you really respect brain 
and that respect comes from the from if, if you are seeing it in that manner so we operated this because i was so much in awe with this beautiful arterial pattern i was very slow and gentle in uh, this large tumor we were able to operate creation of discharge in the fifth post of day then we started creating logos sorry okay leave the logo part now another thing that has happened is because i was able to to modulate my thinking and apply to neurosurgery because for a long time even in neurosurgery when i was doing photography and paintings there were a lot of people my professors who were not liking the fact that i am distracted rather than fusing the two arts there were people there were people who were fearful as to why i get distracted right but i think because of because of accepting new ideas in my mind i was able to push the boundaries so i changed the management of edh right now it's up to me now i have presented it to aims and cmc velour people they have said that in emergency we will definitely use it professor mahapatra the former head of aims he also accepted the fact that this kind of surgery is acceptable so i'll show you some cases so what i do is i i i i think we can go through a small bur hole and we can suck out all the extradural hematoma blood and still we will have no problems and uh, i am since 2009 i am operating all edges with this kind of technique so as you can see post op pre op post op you will see the size of edh increasing with time so you can see a very small skin flap large edh again and we stopped shaving the head of patient particularly if patients are female we would also look for cosmesis so this was one in which i was experimenting with maybe how many number of bur holes uh, in order to have a really good hitch suture but then later i found we don't need these many bur holes and finally this is the largest edh that i have operated this is on a superior sagittal sinus and this is the fracture and we did four bur holes and this is post op and this is the patient five days post op and this is a he drives scooter now so again when i did edh confidently i wanted to do more so then i thought why not this bur hole approach for tumors and ich large ich 26 year old guy about to get married in next 5 months so i did a small craniotomy and some punctures in the cortex and removed the hematoma and now i'm washing it and then i put the endoscope inside and i examined the cavity this is the inside of the cavity large fourth ventricular tumor the, the child is very young 13 years male and i wanted to do a very small craniotomy telovelar approach you can see the tumor here inferior medullary volume very small craniotomy 2.5 cm and this is inside so whenever the the craniotomy side is very small i always take help of an endoscope inside and completely remove the tumor you can see this is the endoscopic navigation inside to show that there is a good fluid coming across the aqueduct and this is a child on very next post op day now he is learning karate this is the post op mri completely removed tumor again a cerebellar lesion direct approach just a small bur hole temporal lesion again small craniotomy this is the tumor 
And now you can see this white cross. This is the optic nerve, and the tumor is removed. Patient discharged in three days. Very rare histology. And then a large meningioma. As you can see, it's 2.38 centimeters, and another one is 2.65 centimeters, and complete removal of the tumor. So my point is, if we can accept our creativity, we can definitely make our neurosurgery even better. Again, because I had less time to operate, uh, I had a lot of time because I had less patients in a new institute. We started thinking about craniovertebral junctions. And I realized that whenever we are doing a CVJ anomaly, we should look for vertebral artery that many of the people they do. But then we go for only a single kind of technique to fix C1 and C2. But we can do recombine these processes. And this, this was accepted in Global Spine Congress in 2016. So it would be very lengthy if I go across all this. But there were study of six vertebral artery anomalies. And we did it very in, in a very different way. And these are the latest uh, illustrations that are done for Professor Sarit Chandra. This is DCER technique, if uh, you know, odontoid fracture, and there is a gradual flexion at the CVJ, and there is a cord compression. So I have made an entire series of what is the mechanism of the instability, and how do we do that. So this is Dr. Sarit Chandra's personal technique. It is published. These are some instruments that he wanted for himself. So he just described with me, and I have I have created this set of instruments for him. So this is in the process of patenting. This is for endoscopic hemispherotomy. So we wanted to make a hemispherotomy. What are the principles? How do we operate? And uh, this is, all this is for him. So I'll just show, the, these are the digital paintings that I'm making. And uh, Dr. Ive wanted to see that. How do we do that? There's a very simple program called Procreate in, uh, in iPad. You can make it as a painting. So it's not a rocket science to, to learn painting. You can do it in Photoshop, and you can do it in Procreate kind of program. There are hundreds of programs. The idea is you have to first know what do you want to paint. You should have a lot of practice. Since I am painting since childhood, so it was easy. So this is the, the latest one I have made which is accepted in under publication in Journal of Neurosurgery Pediatrics and is also considered for the cover page. So very soon we may get the good news. This is another photograph of a patient, which is won this, this year's annual Lancet Photography Contest. I have won 300 pounds for this. And this is a photo story. That is a patient who is uh, hemiplegic for 10 years. And uh, even after hemiplegia, he swims at a national level. So again, what I'm saying is I'm connecting the subjects with art and then creating something new which is more palatable in your daily practice, which is, which is more beautiful as publication and which may create a new surgery in your field. This is my favorite landscape. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yeah, so I was, when I was in medical school, when I was in medical school, I was a Yeah, I don't know. 
Thank you, Dr. Mahendra. Professor Aipcherian on God Through Sciences. Am I audible? My purpose is to get you guys to think. You know, we follow different religions, we are from different countries, we have different communities, we have different languages, some of us are white, some of us are black, some of us are brown. So, in the beginning, when it all started off, did we have all these boundaries? And by creating all these boundaries, creating gods, creating religion, have we really evolved or have we gone back? So I'm going to ask you a few questions, I want you to think, okay? Supposing we take a magnifying glass, take a magnifying glass and magnify you. You're going to see molecules, then atoms, and then subatomic sub particles. You know, can anybody name a subatomic particle? Bosons, yes. Quarks, yes. Do you know what is the importance of these subatomic particles? Do you know, anybody? They follow quantum physics, which is quite different from gravitational or uh, the conventional physics. And what is quantum physics? They can either be a particle or a wave at the same time, which means they could be energy or they could be particle at the same time. These are the particles which make you, which make me, which make this floor, which make the stars. They are in continuum. If I magnify you 30,000 times, I'm not going to find people sitting in here. Black, brown, Hindu, Muslim. If I magnify you 30,000 times, I'm going to just find subatomic particles, quarks, bosons in this room. They won't be even this room. The funniest thing is, there won't be even time. Because subatomic particles are sometimes known to go out of the space-time fabric. Please read up on this. Two, two of these particles, I mean one of these particles can appear at two places simultaneously. And you know what is quantum coupling? You divide a photon in two, these particles will have an opposite, opposite spin. They go away a million miles across. They alter the spin of one of these particles, the other particles alters its spin. How are they connected? It's called quantum coupling and we, we still don't know how, how that is. But we see that in the real world. Most often between mothers and their children, when the child is hungry, the mother knows. Even in the animal kingdom, the mother knows when the child is hungry. You know, our education causes us to lose a lot of things. A lot of things, including our intuition. As children, the kind of faculties we have the kind of intuitions we have and the kind of extrasensory perceptions we have, are all lo I mean, they're all lost because of our education. So, let's look at some interesting things. Anybody knows about the Fibonacci sequence? It's very easy. It's one, two, three. So, two plus three, five. Then three plus five, eight. Eight plus five, thirteen. 13 plus 8, 21, and so on. You can go on to infinity. Take one number and divide it by the previous number, 
So 144 by 89 or 89 by 55, you get the golden ratio. Mahindra was talking about Leonardo da Vinci and all these painters, they knew about the golden ratio. The Vitruvian man, da Vinci's many art forms, the face, this by this is 1.618. And that doesn't stop there. The egg, the structure of the egg, the pyramid, branching patterns of trees, snowflakes, branching patterns of blood vessels, lungs, alveoli, atoms, solar systems. It's called the signature of God. You can see? This is where the golden ratio comes in. These are the places where the golden ratio comes in. Now, I'm going to tell you another thing. You know when, do you think there is, there is this poet in Nepalese language, Mr. Devkoda, who said, I can taste sound. You know what is that? What is that called? Cross wiring? What is that cross wiring called? It's called synesthesia. Synesthesia. You know, at some point of time, you need to realize that it is not the five senses that we live with. We have 100 billion neurons. You know how many connections? And the connections are not binary. We are not talking about binary connections. We are talking about what kind of connections are we talking about? Anybody? What is the new computer concepts? Homework for you. Up to eight connections. 100 billion neurons. Quantum computing. Okay? Our brain is in a state of quantum computing. And it can change every second. With learning, the number of connections can change. That is how big a supercomputer the brain is. You think our brain is to hold a job, hold something, do something which a robot can do? The brain is not for that. 100 billion connections. You don't need even 25 million neurons for that. A human is the most evolved thing that you can ever think of. Probably the guy who made you stopped with you because he's probably done his masterpiece and yet we don't realize what our 100 billion neurons are for. So I was asking, you know, if you go into the, delve into the Hindu philosophy, you know, all other religions are fantastic, but uh, I've been brought an Orthodox Christian. I've been brought up an Orthodox Christian. But when you delve into the Hindu philosophy, the, the Sanadhan Dharma, one thing you realize about God is, uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not siding with all the fanatics who fight for religion these days. It's, it's a shame, you know. But you look into the Hindu philosophy, white or black? Is God white or black? Is it evil or pure? Is there evil? What is evil? At this time, I want to tell you a story. You know, there was this man who, who wanted to be pure. He wanted to be pure. So what he did is, he, took, he went to a place and started tapasya, penance. He started meditating. He wanted to be more and more pure. What happened? He started having an aura around him, a light around him. All the plants, exotic plants came up where he was sitting. And people started worshipping him. All the village, villagers, they came and saw that this man was sitting and doing tapasya. And there was this beautiful flowers, exotic flowers all around him. And then 
they started worshipping him and this man his penance grew in strength he probably evolved he started becoming purer and purer and purer people could not look at him he was the source of light and at that time there was a little bit of pride in him he started thinking i'm so pure i am so pure i want to be more pure more white more light at that time you know shiva was passing through you know shiva is the god of destruction is a naughty god you know he doesn't have lajja you know what is lajja shame okay that is the curse of the society okay shame is a curse of your society i mean our present society we are ashamed by everything how we eat whether we eat with our hands or we are properly dressed we are ashamed by a hundred things shiva doesn't have shame so shiva sometimes he wears nothing he has just ash over him he lives in a cemetery and he is a god of destruction so he was passing through so shiva saw this man and he went there along with his devils you know he he is accompanied by monsters so he shiva went with his monsters and sat there and his monsters started playing with all his exotic plants so this man opened his eyes and he said hey shiva please move out this place is not meant for you and your monsters please move out this is a garden it's a beautiful garden so shiva said this world is mine okay i am the world how can you ask me to move out so this man said this place is pure you are not shiva said prove it this man took a knife he just put his hand up like that took a knife cut his finger and pure tree sap flowed out tree sap you see the sap pure sap flowed out so he said shiva see how pure i am how pure i am shiva said this is nothing the animals eat this and make blood that makes them better than you are so how come you are pure so this man was ashamed he said okay shiva show me what you are shiva took his trident cut his finger off you know what flowed out ash ash flowed out in hindu philosophy in sanatan dharma ash is something that indicates death the end when you are dead when you are burnt nothing but the ash remains so the man immediately understood that unless you live with death there is no life unless evil is there the good things are not there unless black is there there's no white if you see yin and yang if you see black and white matter and antimatter they cannot exist without each other advaita is actually the fusion of these two principles it's jivatma and paramatma or black or white this is god if you want to know about the god concept don't go into one part too much fuse both and then you will find what is that concept that is why shiva sometimes is known as ardhanarishwara half woman and half man right now i'm going to show you a video how do i how do i play this can i have the mic okay so we are about to see a 
How sound can be seen? That's what they're showing. How do you see sound? Each element is changed by sound. What you saw was sound creating patterns. And if you see, 5,000 years back in uh, homes, they used to put, and even in altars, in Jewish, Jewish altars, they used to draw the six-pointed star, the David star. In Mayan history, they used to have six-pointed earrings. And, and the altar, they used to, they used to, they used to draw the six-pointed star. What is the six-pointed star? What does it star stand, stand for? Do you know? You see the tonoscopic pic picture of home, you will see that the six-pointed star starts there. And if you look, there was no religion at that time. It was just mathematics. The sound, they found out that there was something special about this sound. They were trying and de they were trying to depict this sound. They tried to draw it, and it is three yantra. People, con people, they think it is sacred because it was the sound, it was how they depicted this sound. Now, that is a tonoscopic picture of Om. And the three yantra, what you draw, is there. Now, how does one evolve? There are seven chakras, we know that. What is the lowermost chakra? Muladhara. A man with Muladhara activation, that is the lowermost chakra activation, he will be lustful. Lust doesn't mean just for women or men or for food or for anything, but also he would have creativity like uh, uh, Dr. Chauhan. Okay, this is Muladhara Chakra. The next chakra is Swadhisthana, the chakra of satisfaction. This is when the prana, the life force comes up to the that chakra and then people they are satisfied. Next is Manipurna, the chakra of energization. And the next chakra is interesting, Anahata. It's a heart chakra. You know, you were born with only two emotions. And those were sadness and happiness. Both brings tears. And you know, both cleanses you. After a heartfelt laughter or after crying, you feel clean. This is something we forgot. As a society, we forgot. When we grew up, we forgot to either laugh so much or cry so much. 
that it brings tears. So, you know, you get, keep on getting dirty inside. So, after Anahada is Vishuddha. Vishuddha is kindness. It's not kindness where you give some money to charity. You see a child who is starving in Ethiopia and you give some money. You give some money to some charity agency. This is not that. This is the kindness which Karna showed. Before the last battle in Mahabharata, Indra came to Karna. Indra was the father of Arjuna. Indra knew Arjuna would lose unless Karna's his body armor and his earrings were taken away. So Indra came to Karna and asked Karna, Karna, would you give me your body armor and your earrings? Otherwise, my son will die in battle. Karna was doing his prayers. He said, of course, Indra. He took his, because he was born with his armor, he took his sword, cut it away, cut the body armor and cut the earrings and give it to Indra. Indra was ashamed. And the next day, Karna died in battle. That is kindness, Vishuddha Chakra. When you come to, the prana comes to that level, that is what people are capable of doing. Mother Teresa, she used to wear these pristine white clothes. And when she would see a child sitting in a gutter in Calcutta, she would get into that gutter in shit and hold this child like that. The rest of the mothers would, what are you doing? You're making everything dirty. But Mother Teresa would hug that child. Okay, who's literally sh sitting in such dirty, dirty place. But that is Vishuddha Chakra, that is kindness. Next is Agya. The next level of evolution is Agya, that is leadership. In India, in ancient India, or in Pakistan, unless the princess has gone through each of these chakras, they were not made kings. They they were taught how to satisfy their lust, not how to suppress their lust. As the child, as the church did, or every other religion did, they suppressed the lust. It's not correct. They had to be satisfied. That is why Kama Sutra was written. Lust is no, nothing wrong. It's your, it's as Sharon Stone puts it, it's your basic instinct, right? It's nothing to be ashamed of. So Kama Sutra was written at that time. And then satisfaction came, then energization came, and then they, they learned how to cry and how to laugh till tears came. Then they learned to be kind, so much so that they could give everything away. Everything they had away and they could go as bhikshan dehis. And only then the prince was allowed to be the king. That is when they passed the test to be king. And that is why we had such good kings in the past. Now our leaders, leaders are in the Muladhara state, unfortunately. Most of them. So that is why we have, we have a lot of bad things happening. And the last stage is Sahasrasara. That is when you realize that you are the universe. Tattva Masi, you are the universe. You know, do you think that you, you live only by the five senses? Shark, the shark is such an old evolution. In terms of evolution, the shark is so old. So old that it doesn't have the fin. I mean, it doesn't have the gills. So a fish standing stationary could move its gills and get water inside so that it could oxygenate itself. The shark stops moving, it dies. It has only slits. So it has to keep moving, it cannot sleep. It has to keep moving so that the water gets in. Now, such an old evolutionary thing has survived all this time. If the shark doesn't have eyes or ears, or smell, it can still hunt. Do you know how? 
because it's got on the tip of its nose it's got this special organ called the ampullae of lorenzini and the ampullae of lorenzini is connected to transverse bands on the skin and the shark can electrolocate every living thing has an electrical field and the shark can electrolocate these fish or dolphin and it, it knows and it can hunt just with that or run away if it's a killer orca if it's a pack of orca coming the shark can run away because it knows and you think you do not have electrolocation it's because i mean this boy was talking about vivekananda putting his hand on a book and reading this is exactly what i saw in the art of living ashram and then we got 10 boys 10 10 children here we did function lamarai for them these children could just put their hand on a book and read we brought them for the last conference we made them read actually so this is intuition this is something that we have forgotten because we are overloaded with senses we are overloaded with whatsapp facebook you know news we don't close our eyes and sit for a moment the only time we do that is when we sleep otherwise we feel alone we don't know who are we because we need all the time we need something have you ever felt bad vibes and good vibes you see somebody you feel that this is a guy i'm going to talk to or you see somebody else you feel that i'm not going to talk to him he may be the best guy in the world i'm not going to talk to him these are vibes these are not from your senses it's not whether the guy looks good or bad it's about vibes what is your sixth sense your instinct most of the time you're asked to you, you know your brain is uh, suppresses your instinct you should follow your instinct you know my friend garnet he was here last year he he's incidentally one of the very few civilians who's been who's in the hall of who's a hall of famer for nasa he came and took classes for the boys he's got this experiment about the sound of brain it's not in the audible range but he takes it to the audible range and hears it you know it's so similar to the sea while gbm and meningioma he's got those sounds too and they are ugly you know the trees have sounds the trees have sounds too the universe has a sound okay so you should think about this now you know why ganapati has been made in the shape of an elephant do you know there is an equation of infinity and this is called the mandelbrot set and if you look at the mandelbrot set i'm not going through the video i'm just going to show you the mandelbrot set the equation of infinity if it is drawn in a computer's shape this is what you see if you magnify that infinite times you will get the same shape infinity and you know ganesh his trunk is downstairs but imagine if the trunk is pointed up it is a symbol of infinity and you know what does shiva mean in sanskrit shiva what does it mean really zero you know zero and infinity are the greatest concepts whatever we do we are always between these two zero and infinity so literally om namah shivaya is not a religious stand om is infinity nama means worships shiva means zero om namah shivaya actually means infinity greet or worships zero can there be life without death 
you just need to put that sound off. Can there be life without death? Supposing nobody died, what would happen to planet? What would happen to this planet? What would happen to all of us? Can there be life without death? So I would tell that story and then I would end with that. So there was There was this man who was a big worshipper of Gurdjie. Gurdjie. He was a Vaishnavite, Brahmin Vaishnavite. So he was going through a graveyard, and he saw a few aghoris. You know aghoris? Aghoris eat the flesh of people who are burned. They live in the graveyard. And they eat the flesh of those people who are who are being burned. So this Brahmin, he felt nauseous. He felt like vomiting. And he was he was going to get out of there. Suddenly he saw a very powerful man, physically, and there was an aura around him. This man was sitting. Beneath the trees, meditating, and this man immediately knew that this was Shiva. So he wanted to get out of there because Shiva is a lot of destruction. He wanted to just get out of there. So he told, "Let me just get out." And he turned. At that time, Shiva opened his eyes. Shiva was in a playful mood, so Shiva saw that this man had come to him. He is a Vaishnavite, a Brahmin. So he said, "You come to my abode. Why don't you just say Om Namah Shivaya?" So this man, he didn't want to stay, but he said Om Namah Shivaya. What happened? A fly, which was just flying by, buzzing by, just fell dead. So this man was uh, angry and frustrated that I have caused ahimsa is my policy. I should not kill anything, but I have killed something. He was turning to go. Suddenly, Shiva said, "Say once more." So this man was afraid because Shiva is an all-powerful god, and Shiva is you—you uh, you do not know when Shiva will open his third eye and just take him to ash. So he said, "Om Namah Shivaya." A beautiful bird which was flying by just fell dead. So this man, he was so angry. Shiva became a little more serious. He said, "Om Namah Shivaya." Once. So this man had to say that again. And a deer which was drinking water just fell dead. So this man decided no more of this nonsense. I have killed you know, so much sin on me that I have been lost so many times again. At that time, the village chief said, "Village chief came with his child, the Shiva, for blessing." Shiva turned to this man and said, "Come, Namah Shivaya, one." This man told Shiva, "Listen, I am a Brahmin. If I curse you, you may be Mahadev." But if I curse you, you will have a Brahmin's curse on you. You may, you may make me into an ass. You may make me into ash. But I am not going to stay. I am not going to kill this beautiful child. The child was just fourteen days old. The child opened, opened his eyes, and then spoke. The child said, "I was a child." Got me to a bird. 
immediately he sat that down to us speak. So you must understand that life and death comes together. One of our problems is that we want to force things. We want more and more and more. And then what happens? That's the tornado. How does the tornado die? And it goes into an empty place. Nothing is there for it to go. And it dies a natural death. In our mind, if we have to get the tornado rid, rid, of, rid of this tornado and up, up far, what do you have to do? Get rid of everything. All your attachments. Last story, I've told this many times, many places, still remains relevant. My grandfather told this. At that point of time, I didn't really understand it, but now I understand so much. A king was going by, knowing his disguise, and he saw a farmer going just a four by four land, four feet by four feet. So he asked the farmer, why are you throwing this four feet man? Are you ashamed to in my kingdom? I am the king of this country. Uh, even I am ashamed that you are throwing this four by four man. So the farmer said, I have all I have. So the king told him, okay, we will sort it out. Tomorrow morning, start running. How much ever? Big circle is big, big shots. The man started running. Six o'clock in the morning, the bell was sounded and the man started running. By twelve o'clock, he had covered such a big man, he would have been a very rich farmer. But then he saw the Jaminda, the farmer's owner, he was passing by in a chariot. So this man thought, maybe I should run a little bit more. Then he ran for one more hour and he saw the minister coming in. The eighth coach is that is he said, I might run a little bit more than that, and then I'll get more than the minister. By four o'clock, he wanted to start back and he ran back very fast. And he realized he's never going to make it. By the sunset, he was lying down. And in here, and destroying this four by four land thing. All of the story is how much land we know? Six by six. That is all you need. And what are you missing when you run? In your life, whether you do a job, whether you want to make money, some people want a record of number of surgeries. Some people want to do it. Some people want to make money. Some people want to travel. Some people want so many other things. And you run. But you run and run and run and you never complete. What is your circle? Your family. Your dad and mom. Whom you forget that he's even husband your child, it is your wife, it is your lover son, it is your hobby, it is your art, it is your free time, it is your time that you meditate, time for yourself, that is in the sun. And you run, and you run, and you run, because you never close your eyes. You want more and more and more. You're always obsessed with more and more and more. You run, finally, at the end of your day, at the end of the day when you, you need to really go back to you in this existence. You understand that you've not really done a lot of good things. You've not really done a lot of things worth a smile at the time that you go. This is what you need to realize. Moment. To leave that greed of yours. Moment you say there is enough, is enough. I have enough to be happy. That is when you find happiness. So, with
that, we should conclude the fish who made Ashoka Chakra can wait. Thank you very much. Yes. Next stop would be by Professor Kato. Professor Kato is the president of Asian CNS. Who should be forever the president of the because I haven't seen anybody helping young people all over the world. I have been a fellow once ten years back, and I remember in that small room in Sudita. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so, at the beginning, thank you very much for a kind invitation. Dr. Uh, Ayub, he used to be with us. Uh, he is one of the, uh, how do I say, uh, outstanding the fellow <laughs> since I had. So, the, now he he become a chairman of such a wonderful hospital. And also, uh, oh, his wife is so beautiful. I, I think uh, that he got a nice wife and family now. And I think uh, he will have a more uh, successful to, uh, I think, uh, in the meaning of the, the uh, maybe support for the young doctors and, of course, the student and the resident, uh, especially the female, uh, the student and the, the resident, I think, in the future. I'm sorry, some connection of the, my laptop is uh, a bit. So this month, uh, the uh, November 14th, the first Dr. Uh, Kanaka, uh, he is real, the first lady neurosurgeon in Asia. So she passed away at the age of 86. So she always encouraged us and uh, uh, she lived in a, a very remote place in India, and the, the, her teacher is uh, Professor Ramamurti, and he used to be the uh, World Congress President and Society President of India. And uh, she devoted the neurosurgery, especially functional neurosurgery, and he o uh, always uh, encouraged me to do the science and also the uh, evidence based medicine is very, very important. So I think it's a very great loss for us. My talk is, is consists of a very variety of the topics, so not only the one things.
I don't understand. No, no, this is not. This is another one. Did you press something? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. 
Enable content. Enable content. Hmm? Yeah, you have to enable content. Then go to a video. That's which Ah, it's playing. It's playing. playing. You have to double See, it. It's playing. Yeah. Oh. Okay, I'm so sorry because some, uh, my laptop it does not fit. So this is a. Uh, Can 
can you see this is uh, uh, so this is a three years three years back uh, uh, NSI in India so this is 65 of the uh, annual Congress of the India so at the time uh, so India and the ladies uh, uh, female doctors association uh, was founded so of course Professor Kanaka, maybe uh, some of you know the Dr. Kanaka. So she is at the age of uh, 84 years old. And uh, uh, she is uh, a founder of the Female Association of India uh, two years back uh, uh, December. So I think uh, India is a still very limited number of the lady uh, neurosurgeons. But I think uh, uh, the time is maybe the other at Chennai. So I was so so uh, proud of them, and also the in the center is Dr. Kanaka. Was there? So so he is a Kanaka. Maybe you saw that these pictures. Uh, he always encouraged us uh, from the very very remote uh, place in India. And always he, she uh, encouraged us to do the uh, science and uh, some, uh, get the results and uh, revolt to the patient. So this is, uh, uh, and also this, uh, this picture was taken in 2009. So the, uh, I hold some uh, small uh, meeting. So at the time, uh, the, the lady gathered. The right side is, uh, one Indian the lady neurosurgeon, he is doing a very, very skull based uh, neurosurgery. And Professor Kanaka, and uh, the right side is Dr. Lin from, uh, from uh, Beijing. She will be holding of the, uh, in next year, the WFNS World Congress in September. And the, the Kanaka and me, and the, my, my left side is the uh, current. Well, Federation of the Educational Chair, uh, Chair Lady, uh, Isabella Germano from uh, New York. She is also a functional neurosurgeon. And uh, this picture was taken uh, this uh, last September uh, in Canada, Toronto. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hira, uh, now he moved to the Toronto. And uh, there was a meeting of the uh, minimally invasive uh, Congress. So the, now she is a very amazing lady, I think, uh, uh, at, at her age. So she, she, she has a <laughs> much of talent. I think in the future, uh, can be a very good uh, lady neurosurgeon, maybe the role model of the uh, uh, lady neurosurgeon in the future. So the, the Dr. Akshayan, and he introduced about the Asian Congress. So this was uh, the founded in 1993. Uh, but actually speaking, uh, a few years before, uh, there was a founding meeting was held in Pakistan, Lahore. Uh, the main role was uh, Professor uh, uh, Adi Raja. Uh, unfortunately, he died. Uh, because of the, the uh, airplane crash uh, accident. And the Professor Kano is uh, my uh, former chairman in the left side, and the, uh, Raja is the right side. And uh, this uh, picture is also the uh, several doctors, uh, uh, the founder of the Asian Congress. Uh, from the left is Dr. Hashi and the Professor Ramamurti and uh, uh, more shoots, uh, pediatric neurosurgeon, and Professor Ota, uh, also uh, he passed away, and Professor Kano. And uh, uh, at the time, 1993, Professor Kano, he invited 100 young neurosurgeons to our uh, place. Uh, my place is Nagoya, but uh, uh, the first uh, uh, kind of the Asian Congress was held in Toyota City, just next to the Nagoya. The Toyota is a famous for Toyota motor car. And the right side is, ah, sorry. So this picture was, was taken at the time. So Professor Tariq Tarzin was uh, uh, 
uh, you can well, you can kind of see in the first slow and the center he is uh, still there. And many of the uh, uh, other time is very young doctors became uh, the chair on or uh, very uh, high position of the uh, neurological uh, in each society. And uh, uh, this picture uh, also was taken at the same time. So uh, maybe the Pakistanis, uh, he realized of the several Pakistan uh, neurosurgeons uh, are in, in, the, in the pictures. And Dr. Sama is another my chair, uh, the, my boss uh, is also uh, the, the three, uh, the third from the left. And the uh, structure of the, the Asian Congress, uh, the first I'm sharing you, is very, uh, very much involving of the uh, Asian uh, Congress, uh, uh, the uh, event. So we have a uh, uh, every two years Congress, and uh, uh, also the educational course. The chairman is uh, I'm sharing you now, and also the collaboration with the international organizations. And also the Asian Journal online now in the training center. Uh, I who is also in charge of this uh, uh, task. And the YNS uh, grant and education and the uh, Asian fellowship and uh, uh, instrument uh, donation. And uh, the, this time I also will bring some books and DVD and uh, several committee inside of the, uh, the Congress. So the, the Fellowship, not only the doctors, but also the students and nurses, and also the providing the seminar and the, the uh, educational course and the instruments and the teaching, teaching materials and textbooks. So this picture, the three nurses uh, fellow from Sri Lanka that he uh, wanted to study under the Professor Kamal. It was uh, almost 20 years back. And. Uh, so the, this is uh, Indian the nurse was working uh, at her uh, OR uh, when Professor Kano was the chair, uh, chairmanship. So the, we have all, always the many uh, nurse and the doctors uh, at our, at our uh, uh, department. So this is the second Asian Congress, uh, which was held in Osaka, Tokyo, 1998, where Osa was uh, the president. So Professor Kanaka in the, the center in the first row, in the Raja, and so many doctors he recognized uh, in, in the crowd. So the Professor Kano, always he said, we are now the Asian family. And uh, these two, two doctors is come from the North Korea. Uh, and uh, this was a two zero zero or zero. Oh, I was the president of the ACNS, and it was held in Nagoya. And at that time, uh, uh, so many the invited guests uh, from our NFT and also Professor uh, so Indian, uh, if I say, uh, do you know his name? So anyway, so uh, uh, many doctors had gathered at that time. And Dr. Benny from Indonesia, and also the special guest, uh, this is the Hong Kong uh, Asian Congress of the Yasha Jun. And this is uh, 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 during the Hong Kong meeting, the Professor Ramamurti gave us some uh, uh, greetings. And this is six uh, Asian Congress was held in, in Mumbai, uh, Dr. Mishra was the host. And uh, all the time uh, we associate with the Asian uh, uh, lady neurosurgeon to the gathering. So at that time, so the right side is uh, the many lady neurosurgeon from Asia. Uh, that we had a very nice gathering at that time. So called uh, Asian uh, Women in Neurosurgical Association. And this was a Japanese uh, colleague, a lady neurosurgeon. And this is uh, Malaysia, and this is a Turkey, and this is a Kazakhstan, and this is Indonesia. And last time, uh, is, uh, that means uh, this year, uh, this year March, uh, it was held in Dubai. So in the future, uh, uh, until uh, 2022, who was uh, uh, resided uh, in Dubai, the Shanghai. 
and uh, the Fuzel Fuzel so will be the, uh, the Russia cousin, the fourth biggest uh, uh, city in Russia. And simultaneously, we do the uh, ancient journal, and uh, uh, these are the key person of the journal. Now it's uh, online, so please submit your papers. And this is uh, uh, besides that, it's an educational course. So the I is uh, uh, from this year, uh, from next year, again and again of the more uh, educational course uh, in Asia or some other place. So the, uh, how we can support the developing place uh, in, in neurosurgery? So because we have so many patients for one neurosurgeon. So this is not Asia, but this is Africa. Is uh, one neurosurgeon take care of the 10 million uh, patients, uh, the people. Uh, it's, it's quite a uh, uh, shortage of the doctors. Especially in Africa, in the sub Sahara area, is uh, more than uh, the 20 countries that doesn't have any neurosurgeons. The developing countries, the six. 6% of the neurosurgeon uh, care for 34% of the world, the population. So neurosurgical uh, treatment, intervention, so collaboration of the, we cannot do uh, only by the doctors. Uh, of course, neurosurgeon and specialized nurses. And the uh, operative room, uh, uh, the room uh, itself is very, very important, and also the uh, anesthesiologist. So we need to train not only the doctors, but also nurse and anesthesiologist is uh, another important thing. The care for the neurosurgical the disease is uh, requires the operating rooms and the blood tanks and the equipment and the intensive care unit. So the high uh, treatment place is uh, very important for very sophisticated uh, the disease. The neurosurgical disease uh, uh, commonly uh, considered of the primary importance is the hydrocephalus or trauma brain injury and the, the tumors. So TBI is uh, endemic disease in the low or middle income uh, countries. So World Health Organization is the Fuzel Fuzel. It will be the third leading cause of the death in the world. The leading cause of the death in patients with trauma, around 50% of the trauma deaths. Uh, related to the head trauma. So Western world is uh, uh, the, quite a senior uh, person can be affected by the uh, trauma. But in the low or middle income uh, the countries, the patients are quite younger. So we lost, we will lose of the many young generation by the uh, head trauma. The so mean age of the uh, professional athlete is uh, 20 years. And traffic accident uh, accounts for the more than 55 percentage. So the, in a recent Indian survey, so oh, the mean age of the TBI population is uh, between 16 and 25 years old, very, very young generation. So for, uh, how do we pre prevent uh, the prevention measures such as uh, uh, helmet? So that is one of the uh, uh, solutions. So the, not only the ICNS, but also WFS Foundation. So we can support. Uh, what is the WFS Foundation? Is uh, so activity. So many activities uh, in the foundation. So educational course, including hands-on workshop and brain surgery in developing countries, and support of the basic neurosurgical instrument course, and support young neurosurgeons.
So this is a this uh, is a So, the 
DVD or journal or also different forms. This is the educational video. We complete educational video. We create
Can you can you hear me, uh, Hera? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? No. Uh, we're trying to. Can you can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Very good. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me, Hera? Okay. I guess I'll go on speaking. I can't hear myself, but uh, it's a pleasure to. Uh, meet you all, and I'd like to thank Hera especially for helping organize this. Uh, she did a lot of work. She's a hard worker, like a true neurosurgeon that she's going to be. And I'd like to help uh, thank you, Tom, and of course, I'd like to uh, thank Ipe. Uh, when I first met Ipe, uh, I could see he's a visionary, uh, I believe, with uh, neurosurgical education. Uh, and he's introduced me to many fine people, including Dr. Cato. Uh, who is also a visionary that's trying to spread the message of neurosurgical education in the developing world. And I will aid both Ipe and Dr. Cato in whatever direction they want to bring with neurosurgical TV. Uh, on conferences all over the world, I want to take you, take you on a brief uh, tour of uh, basically what we're doing. Uh, okay, at neurosurgical, can you see that, Hera? Uh, can you see that okay? Okay, let, let me let me check here. Make sure I'm I'm sharing the screen. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on here. Okay, learning this tech. Okay. Everyone else. John, John, hello, yes. John, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Yeah, John, John, we're really running out of time, so I would just appreciate if you can say hello to all of the participants sitting here. They're yes. All watching you. Just a hello and a small message and. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll see you all after the conference. Thank All you. Right. Okay. Bye bye. Okay. She has been, Neurosurgical TV has been uh, with us since the past one year, and that is how we began our journey of AMSRS. I've been asked many times by many. Okay, very good.
Very delay. Temporary delay, folks. Uh, I don't know if we're going to hook up again, but I want to interview the people that are attending, the students, neurosurgeons, if, if possible. So hang, hang on.
John, ¿cómo le va? ¿Todo bien? Bueno, recién me fue, me fue el juego de, de ayuda, de estar ahí. Entonces, cualquier cosa sabe de, de, de Buenos Aires, estaré bien.
Hey, dog. Hey, you're going to love this, man. It's fucking great. <laughs> okay, I televised the conference from Nepal, right? Oh, you don't see me? Oh, okay. I think my screen, I got to get off the, uh, hold on. Yeah, that's true. No, 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 I'm trying to, but I, they won't connect. I'm trying to. Uh, so, uh, well, I just got to shut it down. Okay. Yeah, I'll just shut it. Okay, I'm going to shut it down. Okay, let me shut this zoom down. And the meeting.